The profile of the church. A congress that is revealing the heart of the Father, the expression of Christ, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit to Christian Mission the Calvary. And that's the reason why we exalt the Lord and we glorify Him for His faithfulness and how He has been taking us so that we can understand that it's not an academical profile or a profile for a equipment in a level of a profession of a development in a way that we have to act as a, in a secular level but it's the preparation of Christ through the Holy Spirit to Christian mission the Calvary to express the glory of Jesus Christ in all the areas of the, our lives And that's why today we were seeing the importance of the profile connected to the Father, connected to God. How is our relationship with God? But later it was taught to the profile to the world, the church thirsts the world, what has to be the attitude, what has to be the participation, what is the responsibility But later, the profile about our the personal life, the relationship with the rest of the people. How important it is to understand this, because many times we assume that we have understood all those things. And we give thanks to God for each and every one of you, how you are receiving the word, how you are being full, filled, and how you have taken what the Lord is given. We have seen photo, photographs, videos that you are gathering the congregations with your family or the family fellowship groups or the groups of the pastors of the districts are gathered to, whether it's a personal level, however the Lord is working in your life, how God is working in your life. We bless you from here. The same with the different transmissions whether it's by the radio, by YouTube, and the different transmissions that are being done. We bless each and every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. And we understand that the Lord is there to manifest his glory and make you see that he is Lord of all creation. When we are talking about the profile of Christ, The profile of the church is the profile of Christ himself. It's Christ himself being shown in the church. And the Christ itself revealing Christ. How the Lord said in his word, the Father and I are one. He is in me and I am in him. That is precisely to have the profile Christ had the profile of the Father, but now the church has the profile of Christ. That's why Christ and the church are one. We are one. He's the head and we are his, the body. Now that means, as it was being said yesterday, that the design established of what the Lord wants, his intention, his purpose, his objectives, As we talk of the church and the kingdom of God, it's not our objective what moves us or takes us to the kingdom of God, but it's his purpose for what we were chosen. And he allowed us to be born, not just in the new life in Christ, but being born on this earth to introduce us to his body. And in that way, we can live in the kingdom of God as newborn again. Now, how beautiful is that you and me, we are not the product of just one desire of someone or because I received the Lord or because I understood everything of the Lord, but it's because of his calling to the purpose that he chose you and me too. Now, when we're talking about the profile of the church, we are talking about the purpose of the Lord of his intention, the intention of God in the kingdom of God manifested and being expressed through the church. 
And that's why we have been talking about the kingdom of God, because there is the foundation. We cannot express the kingdom of God just by knowledge of rules, with the knowledge of who is the king. We cannot express the kingdom of God if we are not living born again. Because entering the kingdom of God, as we were saying yesterday, and how his word said, is by being born again. It's not just by saying that I believe in Christ. Because the scripture says that even the demons believe. So it's not for that. It's because we were born again. Because we have experienced that Christ put his, his nature in us and he has made us children of God for the glory of his name. And going back to the verse Colossians 1.13, that is the one that we used yesterday as the base, as the foundation, very strong foundation of what the Lord is teaching us. And today we will be talking about the profile of the church as our identity as children of God. But let's see how we can make that a reality and how the scripture says that we are apt to do and we're capable to do that we are habilitated to develop and express the manifestation of Christ in our lives. Now let's read Colossians 1 13 who has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of his beloved son. I read it again. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of his beloved son. What have we said then in relation of this? That it has nothing to do with the kingdom of, of, of darkness that doesn't exist. Christ himself established that Satan is the prince of this world. And this world is in darkness. Therefore, there has he's never been called Lord or nobody else has recognized him as a king. Therefore, we, we sh it shouldn't be talked about the kingdom of the darkness. But like I said, sadly, the interpreters of the scripture have called it in some traditions the kingdom of the darkness. But that is not like that. That doesn't exist. And the Lord himself didn't say it. And like I said yesterday, he put the enemy in its place. That the Lord your God you will worship and only him you will serve. Because there's only one king. There's only one king who is called Jesus Christ and his kingdom is the one that rules and governs in all his creation. So then when we're talking about the kingdom of God, we have to understand that we're not talking about democracy. We are talking about a kingdom. We are talking about a rule. When the scripture talks about the new regimen of the spirit, it's talking about a kingdom. It's not just talking about roles established, but a lifestyle, a culture, and everything that has to do with the kingdom, with a whole life, economy, politics, family, work, everything that has to do with the expression of the kingdom of God. So then it's not a democracy, but it's a life of kingdom. Therefore, the Lord has never shown or said that we are to decide the life in Christ. It's already established the life in Christ. It has been said how, and it has been exemplified with Christ himself with the person of Christ himself he has shown us and revealed what is the life of the kingdom because he himself said the kingdom of God is among you it's among us so what was he talking about he was talking about himself that was already there and now it was already visible on earth being expressed 
not just that he's the king, but how is the life of the kingdom? And that's why our only model for, by excellence and the only person that we recognize as the Lord of Lords and King of Kings is Jesus Christ. There's no one else that established the rules of the church. Many teachers have established rules so how the church has to be, how the church has to be developed, what it needs to be done, and the order, the hierarchical order, and many things has been invented when the Lord himself has established in his word what is the order. Therefore, it doesn't correspond to the Apostle Abraham, to ministerial body, or any church or any pastor to establish how the church has to be. But yes, to discover and look into the word what the Lord says of how the church has to be. It is then the church of Christ because he said that he will edify his church, his church, the church that he bought with his blood. And therefore he established the rules and he's the model. He is the model of the life of the kingdom of God. When I see the, the, the coming of Christ, I don't see a no moment that Christ came to fix my problems, to resolve my financial problems, to resolve my financial family problems, even though that is also seen as a gain of looking first the kingdom of God, but is, that is not the objective. The objective is to take us to her purpose through the new birth to enter the kingdom of God and establish the kingdom of God. And the we as the church proclaim and establish the kingdom of God in every place that we are. Then he does, he didn't came to fix our circumstances. And as I was saying, uh, as Apostle Paul said in that time when he was converting, he understood it really good. Lord, what do you want me to do? It wasn't a question that many asked themselves, but Lord, what is the church going to do for me? Or what are you going to do for me? Or what God is going to do for me? That God heal me, heals me, that God frees me, that God resolve my family problems, that God fix my problems my circumstances they're waiting for something that in reality has to be a surrender from us to god and not god towards us and that's why we we have misinterpreted the kingdom of god and that's why i was saying that the kingdom of god is not a, a democracy but it's the kingdom of god that is manifested through the rules and the requirements that the father has established so then the problem is that when I don't know who I am, I custom myself of everything that I want to be. So what I want to do, it, bec it becomes good. And whatever I put a custom of, that to me is good. And I accept it. And that's how I am. But you are not, when you're not that, when you have been tra translated to the kingdom of God, to the kingdom of his manifestation, to the glory of that that you were slave, of that that you were dominated by the darkness, but now you have been translated to the, his beloved son. It's precisely so that you are what you are in Christ. So that each and every one of us have an ident a clear identity and a perfect identity of what we are according to the purpose that we have been called so we don't have so then we don't have to hide or put a custom and put a bunch of customs or a mask that we want to to put on to pretend to be something jesus christ was it says the expression of his glory of his nature he was the same expression of the glory of the Father, and he didn't have to put any mask here on earth. He simply was the Son of God, revealing the Father here on earth. 
And that's what the church has to understand. That's why we have to understand what it means that translate, transfer from the from the darkness to his the kingdom of his beloved son. And yesterday we explained that transfer and what does it mean and how it is accomplished. And it's accomplished to the new birth. Whoever is not born again, one, it cannot see the kingdom of God. The one who has been born from the water and the spirit cannot enter the kingdom of God. And if it says it cannot enter, it's simply that. Even if you revise it in the Greek, in French, in Italian, in Mandarin, or any other language to what you want to look it at, it is simply that expression, it cannot be. It simply means it cannot be. Even though the system can tell you every religion, religious, religion takes you to the Lord. Any other denomination or false doctrine tells you how to get to God, simply you cannot. If you haven't been born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. So then the requirement is to be born again. But it's not just the fact to raise your hand and say you raised, you were born again. No, it is to be to die, to be buried, and to rise up with Christ and be planted in Jesus Christ. So then how important it is that we understand our position. And our position there is precisely the fact that we are children of God. Why? Because the scriptures say, I'm just mentioning John 1, 12, but those who received him, and when it says those who receive it, it's not saying just to accept and raise your hand and say, I accept, I accept Christ. No, receiving is, may, is having Christ enter me, like Paul said, Christ in me, I don't live no more, but Christ live in me. That's what it is. But not put it in our hearts, put, save it in our heart, how he's be understood, but a Christ that is present in me, that I am make the body of Christ, that I am entering the kingdom of God and become the temple of the Holy Spirit by the Holy Spirit. It makes me be the body of Christ and live in that manifestation and expression of Christ. And it says that I am capable, I am habilitated by his nature and his genetics to express the nature of Christ in our lives. Because being born again, is when Christ put his seed in me. And therefore that is translated to become a children of God to the glory of his name. And so that's why it's very important that we can comprehend how to develop as that. He made us kings and priests, but because we are children, he made us kings and priests, not because he delegated a participation or because he gave us something extra he made us skins and priests because we are children and that's what the magnificence of a king is seen not only in the type of who is the king but is seen in the ruling in how he is ruling and that has to do with the people that has to do with the people who it's being ruled the way that is being governed, the way that is being ruled in the people that are participants of that kingdom. I'll explain it this way. Here in the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 9, verse 1 to 8, it tells us about the, the queen of Saba when she came in front of Solomon. There she got the news of the wisdom and the greatness of the King Solomon. And she wanted to see. She wasn't just the ones that hear, that listen, but she was the ones that she wanted to see. I'll go and see and, and I'll ask hard questions and see if everything was said. It's true. And precisely she went and let's see the story. Let's read it. 
because there it shows us what the Queen of Saba was were to were to us. The Queen of Saba, hearing the fame of Solomon, came to Jerusalem with a very large retinue, with camels laden with aromatic spices, gall in abundance, and precious stones. And listen to this, to test Solomon. And it also says, with difficult questions. And later, and after she came to Solomon, she spoke with him everything that was in her heart. In other words, she took out all her questions, but Solomon answered all his questions. And there was nothing that Solomon did not answer. And also, and when the Queen of Seba saw, look at this order, that's very important. And the, the, the Seba saw the wisdom of Solomon, so first she saw him, and later it says the house that he had built. I read that last part again. And the and the house that he has built, he, she didn't just see Solomon, but she also saw her his surroundings. Let's follow in there. And the food in his tables, the rooms of officials, the state of his servants. I'm going to repeat that part again. The state of his servants. And again, I'll repeat it again, the stay of his servants and the, their clothing, his stewardesses and their clothing and their stairway by which he ascended to the house of Jehovah. She was astonished. And he continues to say, and he said to the king, true is what I have heard in my land about your things and your wisdom. But I did not believe their words until I have come and see, and my eyes have seen, my eyes have seen, and behold, not even half of the greatness of your wisdom had been told me, because you surpassed the fame that I had heard. How tremendous is that testimony? But it also says, blessed are your men and happy are these your servants who are always before you and listen to your wisdom. Blessed be Jehovah your God who has been pleased with you to set you on this throne as skin for Jehovah your God. Because your God loves Israel to establish them forever. Therefore, he has made you king over them. I want us to see what the queen of Saba went to see. Her, her wandering was to go to talk to Solomon and test him with questions. And Solomon answered all of them. But there she starts seeing to the surroundings. And she realized the house of the house that he was living the greatness of the house the excellence and the form that everything was placed in order but then in that part that it says when she started seeing his servants the ones that were there she saw their behavior she saw the way they were dressed she saw the the with her health they were not pale. They were not just serving with a good attitude, with good intentions, but they were showing a good health. And then she started to see her, her clothing. She started to see her clothing, the excellence of how they were dressed, the excellence of how they were putting everything in order. All the people knew what to do. What I want to emphasize here it's just she wasn't just surprised or she just didn't went to see the king, but she went to see the people that lived in the kingdom. Why? Because the magnificent of the kingdom of Solomon wasn't only being revealed by Solomon, but the ones that were around him. 
the problem of the church that we have spoke, Christ is the king, Jesus Christ is the only king, there's no other king like our God, he is the only king, and many other things that we have said of him. But what is people seeing of us? Are they seeing our behavior, the order, the health, the form that we get, that we're dressed? How many times we don't care about how we dress, how we get dressed? The Lord, anyways, He still receives us as we are. But in in this in this village, that's how we get dressed, and that's how we are. She went to see not only the king, but she also went to see. I must say like this: the the place, the village that He was ruling, and that revealed the magnificence of the ruling of Solomon. What will people say of us? How we are dressed, how we talk, how we do our work. What excellence do we have to do all the things? How is our family? How do we do the work, the profession? How do we behave with, the, with others? Are they seeing the, the ruling of Christ in our life? It's people seeing the magnificence of Christ, of Jesus Christ, in each one of us as the church. Because the world is going to see Christ, but through the church. Where did the, the Queen of Saba saw, even though she knew the king, but she didn't care just about the testimony of the, of the king. She was surprised of the, of the Queen Solomon. But what surprised her the most was the testimony, the evidence that she signed the people that was around him. The world will know the magnificence of a King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus, Jesus Christ our Lord, but not only when the church speaks of Christ, preaches of him, that says that he's the King, but when it reveals with their, its life, actions, character, language, the form of, rela of relationships, the way that it, the church dresses. It has worried us seeing programs in YouTube of the of churches of, of the mission, by the way, that in a t-shirt they're preaching, that in a t-shirt they're playing the piano. No, it's just, that's how it is done here. They're just thinking about the village, but it's in, in front of, of who they're doing it. What are they revealing? It's because when they tell me it is done like it is done that way here, they accept us like that. That means that they're presenting themselves through to the village, but not to the king of kings. They're not presenting his magnificence, his glory, his power. Their clothing is not adequate pre precisely to evidence that we are kings and priests and that we are being governed and ruled by the king of kings and lord of lords. We don't care. Oh, no, that's how people, they accept us like that here. And if, every, it's, if they're weak, if they're pale, and showing many diseases, oh, that's good. That's how the Lord loves us. He's merciful. He receives it like that. No, we are in front of the king of kin first. But second, the testimony. I was being said to that we are witnesses we are the ones that reveal. We are the ones that reveal Christ. Imagine a Christ with being sick, a Christ that's pale, as we said here in Guatemala. A Christ that is all messing his finances with bad, bad relationships. No, he revealed the Father. He revealed the Father correctly, and the world and the nations knew who, who the father was because of Christ's expression here on earth. How is the world going to know Christ? Christ. What Christ is the world what Christ is the world knowing? Because it depends on what Christ you're revealing, the what you're showing. If you live um, in in a mess, if you live if you live badly, if everything is done your way, that's the Christ that you are you the church is revealing to the world. A Christ that is messy. 
a Christ that doesn't live good, a Christ that lives on his own way. But that is not the true Christ. The true Christ that does the word does shows me is the one that expresses the father in all the excellence and that's the one that the church has to see remember that the queen of saba was not only impressed by the excellence that that solomon responded she was surprised much more by the excellence of how he lived of how he would everybody was relation related how everything was behaving the ones that were around Solomon do you know you know how the people of the world will be surprised and see the testimony not only of a king but of a kingdom the kingdom is manifested on how the church expresses and how the life lives that's how we're showing the kingdom of christ it doesn't matter if we proclaim he's the only god he's the only king there's no other king but if we are living in disorder we are not revealing the the ruling of christ but the ruling of any other thing or rule or system that is affecting and damaging our lives and that's why we need to understand that that's why we are the revelation of christ here on earth we are the revelation of christ that is the kingdom of god to reveal to live under the ruling of kingdom of god is to reveal the life of christ is to show to the nation how christ is but the excellence of christ the the rightness the righteousness of christ how he relates with everybody else and glory to God that we have a mother of excellence for excellence. Not he not that he only knew how to do it, but he 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 knew how to do it and he showed the father in hold the fullness. And that is the responsibility of the church. So the world is going to know that not not only that Christ is the king, but the ruling of, of Christ and through our lives and my life. Another example is when the king, a swear, made, uh, had a, a party. And what was the purpose of that party? And it says here in the scripture, in Esther chapter 1, and it says there that in those days when King Asuero was established on the throne his kingdom which was and he says there in those days when king Aswara was established on the throne of his kingdom which was in susa the capital of the kingdom in the third year of his reign he made a feast look at the order for all his prince and courtiers so the greatness of his ruling of his kingdom and courtiers having before him the mightiest of persia and media governors and princes of provinces it wasn't just any other banquet feast but what was the purpose to show him to show him the riches of the glory of his kingdom the brightness and magnificence of his power for many days, 180 days. Now let's see this. It wasn't just the action of present of the king presenting himself. He could have easily said, oh, I'm going to present who I am. And as you imagine, he was dressed with the best clothing, with the excellence. Uh, an activity because it was a feast that was present that he was presented for the most important people of his kingdom but that what did he want it to present not himself but the power of his kingdom the magnificence of his kingdom the glory of his kingdom it wasn't himself but what and how he was ruling and how in how was it known that he was ruling that his greatness his power 
his magnificence, how was that known? Not in the many poses that he was putting himself on and or showing his clothing or showing his crown. No, no, it wasn't him. It was what he was doing and he was doing and con will continue to do. Jesus Christ and the scripture show us that we are the expression of Christ and we are precisely to show the brightness and the magnificence of his glory and his power of the ruling of Christ in our lives. What is what will is people seeing? Will they be seeing the magnificence? Are they seeing the glory? Are they seeing the glory, the power in our lives? Or have we been said in the conferences before, a church that is distracted, a church that has fear, a church that doesn't finish what it starts, a church that has not advanced, but at all, but just a little bit, or a church that only thinks in certain circumstances, but not something that's integral. That's not revealing the magnificence of his power. It's not revealing a king. That is revealing anything else, but not the glory of Jesus Christ. So this king make, made a feast. Look for how many days. It was a big expense to reveal his greatness. If there's something that Jesus Christ wants and the Holy Spirit wants wants to do, it says in the scripture that the work of the Holy Spirit is to glorify Christ in us, but also to glorify Christ to the nations and in the nation. But through who? Through a church that knows how to respond to the quality of expression that it has to have in the manifest in the glorious manifestations of Christ in their in its life. But for that we have to understand with all clarity that, it, that we have been transferred from the darkness to the kingdom of his beloved son because we cannot live in the darkness and have actions of the darkness because that is not revealing the magnificence of a glorious and powerful Christ. The world will then know a church in uh, Christ in darkness, and that is not the Christ of the church. And the least, the and less the the Christ of Christian mission, the Calvary. But you and me are responsible to make known the magnificence, the glory, and the power, the ruling, the power of the power of that ruling in our interior life, in our, in our character of our firmness, of the testimony that we have in Christ by the work of the Holy Spirit, then the nations will know that Christ is absolutely different than what the religion has mentioned. How many times in the many different ideologies especially socialism, they, they show up that, that the life in Christ is not a religion, it's the power of God, it's the glory of Jesus Christ being expressed. Everything that's a religion, I'm talking about those practices, those those expressions those actions the religious actions that have nothing to do with jesus christ because it is the person of christ manifested in our lives that's why the church of christ is not a religious church it's the church of christ who expresses the life of the kingdom revealing christ in its fullness in his fullness look how different it is what a difference and that's to that what is what we have been called and that's why we should not only live as someone that has been transferred but as someone that has been put in that position and possession of transfer in the kingdom of god the, the darkness has been left to live in the light of jesus christ and experience his glory and his power and we see that in jesus christ in john 17 it says in the scripture how Christ prayed to the Father, how he did his prayer. 
he himself says, talks that he has glorified him here on earth. So that's why let's see in John 17, 3. And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, who you, whom you have sent. But in what does that knowledge consist in that eternal life? What did Christ do? I have glorified you on earth. He didn't put himself or he didn't, I'm going to say it like this, he wasn't the star in that moment. His purpose was to reveal who the Father was and to glorify the Father in his fullness. I have finished the work you gave me to do. And then it says, now, Father, now then, Father, let's see. I want us to see how many times he mentions Father. Now then, Father, glorify me by your sight with that glory that I had with you before the world was. I have manifested your name to the men. What did he do? The same revealing, not just that the father was and is the king, but showing that he was under that ruling of the father. What did he do? I have manifested your name to the men you gave me from the world. They were yours and you have given them to me and they have kept your word. Now see what he is explaining. He is explaining what they, that they were product, the product of the work of the perfection, of the perfection of Christ that he took them to experiment the, the ruling of the kingdom of the Father. I have manifested your name to the men you gave me from the world. They were yours and you have kept them, them to me and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all the things you have given me come from you. Because the words you gave me, I have given them and they received them and have truly known that I came from you. And I have, and have believed that you sent me. How did they know that Christ came from the Father? Because he gave them the word that the Father gave him. And then it says, and they have believed that you sent me. And then the following says, I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those you gave me because they are yours. And all things is mine is yours. And what is yours is mine. I have been glorified in them. How beautiful. I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you. Holy Father, those who you have given me, Keep them in your name so that they may be one just like us. And when I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Whom you gave me, I kept, I have kept, and not one of them is lost, except the one, the son of perdition, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. How beautiful, what a beautiful testimony and evidence. He didn't just pray, Father, the one that you gave me, I teach them and they're here. He showed them. He showed them the glory of the Father in him, in them, but the glory of the Father that Christ revealed and took them to that life of kingdom and to express that they were being governed and ruled by what the Father was said, was said and established. Someone might have said, what a beautiful testimony. But that's the testimony that you and me have to, to give with the people that the Lord has put under our responsibility. The church of Jesus Christ, precisely he has put us to put it like this. Of course, when he comes, he's going to present the church himself. But now Christ comes and presents these are the ones that you gave me and I am returning them to you. And he showed them like this. That's why he talks about glorifying. I have glorified you. How is that a person that glorifies the father? In this case, as the church, how is it that the church glorifies Christ? When we, when it's present those who has given us that came from the world that came from darkness, but now are in the kingdom of the beloved son in the light and living and expressing the glory of that Jesus Christ, all powerful. 
So then it's not just that case of a stare, not just in the case of the uh, the king of Swero, but in Christ especially was he pressed her presented himself in front of the father to present the glory of the father, not just in him, but now expressed and manifested in the disciples. That is the church that the Lord not only wants, but is establishing and edifying. That's the church of Christ, a, a church that Christ himself and the Holy Spirit will say and has to say to Christ, look, Jesus Christ, this is the church for whom you died. They were they came with the old nature, but now they are living under the new nature, born from the Holy Spirit to a new life, but expressing you, who you are in the fullness and how you manifest yourself now in them, expressing how you live, how you govern, how you rule. See how beautiful now the Holy Spirit giving a testimony like that. And I'm not saying that's what he expects to do with us and of us. That's what he has determined that it has to be done in our lives. Because it says that the Holy Spirit who, glory, who will glorify Jesus Christ. So then who is the one that will make Christ see how his church is? Not the pastor because... The pastor is like, oh, no, the pastors are good people. Oh, beautiful, very spiritual. Just because just of because his human pastoral life. Oh, yeah, how faithful is the brother? How good is the brother here and there? No, no, you, that is not going to be seen there. Just as Christ presented the disciples to the Father, those are the ones that you gave me. In other words, they came in darkness, but now they are in the light of your word. They received your word. They received what you gave me and have believed that I came from you. See how many glorious things. That's what the Holy Spirit not only wants to do, but will do and must do in the people of Christian Mission to Calvary. Put it in front of Christ and say this is what you came to do in the cross translated them from the darkness and to the kingdom of the beloved son jesus christ and it is done and that work was not just just to be done but it's now reality it's been put the genetics and the nature for you have made us children of god not just children of god but as the Just in the cross, he was made the firstborn in many brothers, among many brothers. And that's why that now we have received him, we have become children of God. For what reason? Because he's the son of God who rules, the one who has become king and priest. It's not a, it's not a job. It's not a, cap a capacitation. It's not something that was given up something aside. It is the son of the son who has been made king and priest. And therefore we have to recognize in a clear way and accept our identity as children. Someone will probably say, oh, but Apostle Abraham is now talking about this this subject that has to be talking about kindergarten is but of children. Oh, that. We talk about that a long, long time. You know the the glorious thing of Christ that he always presents himself as a son. And the father always recognized him as children. Let's see in a couple of verses. Well, we won't see all of them, but we'll see a couple of them. Matthew 3, Matthew chapter 3, in the verse 17. And there was a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. It didn't say, this is my prophet and beloved brother. This is my beloved brother. This is the evangelist, evangelist, my beloved evangelist. He didn't recognize them as the minister, uh, ministers. Even though the, it was apostles, he was apostle, prophet, evangelistic. But it wasn't in, in regards of a position, but it was because of his genetics. Because he was 
he said this one not someone else he was pointing at him because it's, when someone says this one it's indicating of someone this is my beloved son how he, he presented him as his son but lady in matthew 17 when it says in verse 5 before going to the cross this is what is known as the transfiguration mountain 17 5 this is after the three years and a half of ministry and how does the father continues to introduce him in matthew 17 5 as he was still speaking a cloud of light covered him and there was a voice that said this is my beloved son in whom i am pleased he listen to him let's read it again as he was still speaking a cloud of light covered them and a voice from the cloud was saying this is my beloved son in whom i am pleased to him listen how tremendous how tremendous what the lord was saying about this and how he expresses his greatness but let's see again this my beloved son in whom i am pleased listen to him three years and a half passed already he ministered he had ministered the disciples and the apostle who he called apostles but the father didn't present him as apostle as a prophet as an evangelist as a teacher as a pastor this is my son see the greatness of being a son listen to him hear him he didn't say listen to the prophet to the apostle of course in some occasions as a in the function of a prophet of an apostle let the design be heard but especially in relation to his son hear him listen to him see the authority that the son has see the respect and the look in the place that the son has more than an apostle more than a prophet more than an evangelist more than a pastor and a teacher the dream of many is to become an apostle the dream of others is to become a prophet Oh, I want you to pray for me so that the, the Lord gives me the prophetic ministry. Let me tell you that the superiority of what the Lord has done in Christ is to make him son. And the superiority of us in relation to make us his son because the son has to do with genetic. As the five ministers have to do with something added because it's a it's a gift well the sun has to do with nature with genetics he was begotten while the ministry or whichever five ministries they're founded it's not by being begotten the one who's begotten is a, is a child of God in the sense of not just in scarcity or in relationship, but it's what makes us his one and only son. I'm not talking about there's only one, but I'm talking about that he makes us children. So to be, to be a child of God is greater than any ministerial function. I'm not saying that, no, no, we're not going to have apostles or prophets anymore. I'm talking about that superiority that today the church has wanted more to have a function and a delegation to have a dream and a lot of people have a dream of being an apostle when when they don't call them apostle they feel like they lacked respect or don't have the respect of the people that they don't recognize me anymore they took me out of the the kingdom that i'm no longer important I'm no longer important, but for me, what is more important than being apostle, the greatest thing to be is to be a child of God because it's making 
me know that I am begotten by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I am a king and priest for the glory of the Father. A pastor, an apostle, a prophet, and the other ministerial gifts cannot be kings and priests by being begotten because only a child of God is begotten. That is given. That is added on, like I said. While being a child of God is the greatest. And it, was, it is what makes me a king and priest. For that reason, for that wrong understanding, and for that understanding that we have seen the gifts, that, that the gifts of the ministries are more superior than being a child of God. That is what makes us have, that, that is what makes us prepare the church in a way that is ruined. Therefore, we're not preparing them to do what God wants, but we're preparing them to do what we believe. Instead of preparing them so that they can be kings and priests, and that they're kings and priests as a product of being begotten children of God. They are ch children because of the Holy Spirit. Because it says, to everyone who received him, he gave them the right to be children of God. And these are those who have been born of God, the scripture says. So the child of God is a person who has been born again. The apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, those are gifts given. They're constituted, the scripture says. And he says, to some he made, he named them, but being a child of God is because you've been begotten. So, therefore, I can be an apostle, but not be a king and priest. I can also be a pastor of a congregation. I'm talking about in human terms or in religious terms. I can be a pastor of a congregation without being a king and priest. Because the king and priest only are the ones who are children of God. Look how glorious. Oh, the dream of everybody's, oh, I want to be this ministry. I want to be an apostle. And I have found in different places, oh, because the Lord has spoken to me, that I'm going to be an apostle. But they haven't. the Lord hasn't spoken to me. Because they dream of being an apostle. And, and they think that's what gives them authority. The authority is not given to you because you've been given a delegated function. The authority in the kingdom of God is given because you're a child of God, because you have your place as a king and priest. And that is why the Lord is calling us that we understand that transfer from the dominion of darkness to the kingdom of his beloved son. The one who made us, he made us children of him for the glory of his name so that we can be kings and priests. So that everything, everything around us expresses the rule of Christ. Christ cannot be expressed in his reign in, in a pastor and a prophet and evangelist because they don't have the genetic. Only to, in the children of God who are kings and priests, Christ is going to express his reign. And he's going to be able to express his rule. I know a lot of people uh, right now that are feeling their seat being moved, but glory to God for that. Because many are only thinking in the privilege or, in, or what they were con constituted as or a position they have. When it's not a position, it is the act of being, of being begotten by the Holy Spirit. That is the glory of the church. The church is not just to have functions that you've developed through a capacity of academic capacity or being part of a biblical constitution or institutes. No, they cannot beget children of God. They can only give you something. But anyone can teach you a, a, a skill. Anyone can teach you anything in an institution. But a child of God can only be begotten by the Holy Spirit. But he is the only one who can make you a king and priest. Because it comes from the line of Melchizedek. That's why many ministers, we have taken the church not to be people who rule. That's why in their homes, they don't see the rule of Christ. In their finances, they don't see the rule of Christ. 
in the congregation. We don't see the reign and the rule of Christ in the family fellowship group. We don't see the rule of Christ. We don't see the expression of a king because who is the one who expresses the, the revelation of the king? It's the church. But it's the church that are children of God who have been born again. That's why it talks about the transfer to the kingdom of his beloved son. Because only in that kingdom, only in that kingdom can the people who have been born of God can enter. That's why it's very important to understand this function and this position that we have. Glory to God for being an apostle or being a prophet. But more than that. The greatest thing of being the church is being children of God, being born again children of God. We can even see in Christ, he didn't feel dishonored or less or unqualified or felt like a second place. He always spoke about the Father. If you notice, I mentioned you, look how many times he's speaking about the Father. And why is he speaking about the Father? Because he's presenting himself as a son. He's presenting himself as a son because he's representing the, he's presenting himself to the father. He didn't present himself to the father. Lord, here I am. I am the apostle. I'm your apostle. The one you named, the one you sent to the earth. Or here comes the prophet of the heavens who have said all these things. Look, the great prophet who has come from you. No, he didn't present himself that way. He said, father, the ones you gave me have now received your word. But why do you call him father? Because he was in the quality of being a son. When you go to the father in the quality that you are, ah, oh, Lord, here's your apostle, your servants, the one you called me, the, the, the ones who have prayed for the paralytics and they have got, got up. Look how many sick people have been healed this month. Look how many conversions I've produced. No, he didn't present all of that. Christ came in the quality of being a son. That's why he always spoke about the father. Look how beautiful. He didn't, didn't come as a pastor. He didn't come as an evangelist or a teacher. Here's the great pastor of all the earth. So father, that's why receive me the pastor, the pastor that you have named. No, he did not come in the quality or function. He came in the quality of being born of the father of a life of expression of the father for him the most important thing was to come as the son of god and for you if they taught if they treated you as a, a child of god they say ah oh, you're just a child of god <gasps> they didn't treat me as an apostle they, they lowered me oh they i feel bad and that day they don't sleep they they, don't, they can't sleep they feel bad why, why did they call me apostle? Why didn't they call me a prophet? Why didn't they call me uh, an evangelist or, or, or a teacher or a pastor? Oh, they feel fallen. They feel like they're not recognized. When Jesus Christ arrived, he understood the superiority of what he was. The son of God. Blessed be his name. And that's why he could say the kingdom of God is among you it's amongst you how is the church going to be able to say the kingdom of god is amongst you and look christ says to the rest who are there listening in the mountain of transfiguration the father says listen to him but listen to him as my son and you and something that paul says or the writer of the book of hebrews in hebrews 1 3 it says before the Lord would speak to us through his prophets, but now he speaks to us through his son. Not that there's no prophets anymore, but the prophets now have been constituted by Christ, by the son of God. Now they're submitted to the son. Before, it was them who received the word directly. Now it's Christ through the Holy Spirit who uses the prophets. But it's through the Son. Now, it says now it's through the Son because in Him all things were made. In Him, for Him, and for Him. It's so that He can be the fullness of all things. Who is the one? 
is going to be the one who accomplishes this. Not Christ as an apostle, not Jesus Christ as a prophet, not Jesus Christ as a pastor, not Jesus Christ as an evangelist or as a teacher, but as a son of God. And I remember what the scripture says, that the creation itself is heming, not for the manifestation of the apostles, not for the manifestation of the prophets or apostles. It doesn't say for the manifestation of the prophets. It doesn't say for the manifestation of the pastors. It doesn't say for the glorious manifestation of the evangelist or the teacher. But for the glorious manifestation of the children of God. So to be transferred from the dominion of darkness to the kingdom of his beloved son. What does it mean? It means that we have been born again, therefore we have the right, and he has made us children of God for the glory of his Father. And that's why we can be, and we are, kings and priests. So why haven't we governed? So why haven't we been governing? Why aren't we expressing the rule of Christ in our life? Why? in our life, in our relationships, in our job, in our businesses, in our profession, in the congregation, in the family fellowship group, why haven't we expressed it? Because we are only seeing gifts, ministerial gifts, or a certain function or a certain, a certain privilege. And let me tell you something, let me reveal to you something. And I hope it opens your understanding. The preparation and the perfection of the church, what is it directed towards? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. And I'll return to say the same thing. The preparation that you're giving to the disciples. What is it being directed to? Isn't it for a preparation of the temple? What we are at least showing and teaching is to be prepared to reign. I'm not talking about political reign or that if someone gets to that position, glory to God. I'm talking about demonstrating the kingdom of Christ in my life and in everything around me. Who do we teach to reign? If it was one of the things that the Lord indicated to Adam and Eve, he didn't just tell them be fruitful and multiply. But he says, govern. And that's what the Lord says to Christian Mission the Calvary. That's why today, it says, we said today that the, the devil should not get, take advantage of us. But why are we looking more at privileges and gifts and functions and extra things that have been given to us? And we're not looking at what we are and we're distracted in those things. And then we have looked at it as something great. When the most great thing is to be children of God, children of the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords, and that is why we are kings and priests. For God his Father. That's why it says he makes he made us children or kings and priests for God his Father. And therefore he made us for the glory of his name. But we have taught how to serve in the temple, how to collect the offering, to take care of the door, to supervise the, the order of the service, to play piano in the worship team and to lead the worship to preach even, to even preach. We have taught them to serve in the temple, but not to reign in every aspect of life. That's why they don't reign in their family. I'm not saying that they start being captains and they start saying, I'm the king of this house. No, that they reveal the kingdom, the rule of Christ in their family but not only in their family, to everyone. And we demonstrate that Jesus Christ is the Lord and he is ruling over the family. But why? Because we only taught them how to serve in the temple. And let me tell you something that might wake you up. And I hope it does. Do you know that the, the Levites, they taught and, taught and prepared people to serve in the temple, but they never governed. And that's why we have a church of Levites. We have prepared them to be Levites. 
but not to be kings and priests. And we are preparing them to do a, a priestly function of Aaron in the tabernacle. The Levites were only prepared to serve in the temple. And they served, and they served really well. There's people who say, oh, today I have to collect the offering. And how great it is that they come with that passion, with that excellence to collect the offering. But they think that's everything to serve God. They think that's everything. The same thing with the worship team. They think by playing the music, that's how they serve God. How we said earlier, the other conferences. And we think that everything that surrounds the temple, all of that is the only thing to serve God, and everything else is not. Pure Levites. Pastors who are forming Levites. Because they as well are Levites. In functions of a Levite. That's why the Lord, when He talks about transferring us from the dominion of darkness, He's talking about the, transferring us to the kingdom of His beloved Son, that we leave that ministry and that function of functioning as a Le Levitical priest, just temple, 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 temple. When I, as a minister, I have to live teaching and expressing and showing the rule of Christ in my life, but expressing and revealing it to all Christian mission of Calvary, to all the nations. But the same thing you as a minister, but every disciple as well. How beautiful it is that we do it with passion, Every responsibility we have in the temple, we, we have passion to do it. But that's a responsibility given to you, not because you were begotten. That is what we have taught to the, the people. We haven't taught them how to, the people of the church, to be kings and priests. We've only taught them how to complete functions, how to rule in their, key, in their finances. And we haven't taught them how to rule in their family. And if they're in the politics, that they also rule in the politics. If they're ministers of the government, that there they show the rule of Christ. But I speak about showing and revealing it, not saying it only. We, it was said today that I shouldn't just take a message that Christ is the king. No, it's to reveal with our life, with our character, with all the, th the actions we have, that Jesus Christ is the king of my life, but he's also the king of the nation. Today, the nations are interested of knowing a king of kings at the caliber and the quality of Jesus Christ. But you know why they're still desiring it? That's why it says the creation is heming. They're heming. But why are they heming? Why do they have to heme? Because there is a lack of children of God who are revealing the rule of God. So if there was that, why is the creation still heming? Because we're still no, the creation still noticing that the ones who were given the responsibility, the ones who were made kings and priests, who are his children, they're not expressing him exactly how he is. So the creation is heming. And so someone hemes when they have pain, when they have worry, they need something. They're, 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 they're screaming for our answer. And the only answer is in the church. I'm talking about the true church. The church that is made up of people who have been born again and therefore they're children of God who are ruling but not just speaking about a king of kings but speaking about the Lord of Lords and let me tell you another thing the apostle doesn't inherit the prophet doesn't inherit the evangelist or the pastor or the teacher the church or sorry the scripture says that you and I we are heirs and co-heirs with Christ but not because we're apostles prophets evangelists pastors and teachers but because we are children because the only one who inherits is the child of God so Oh man, the apostle kicked me off the horse. Well, glory to God. And let's, it's better that you stay off of the horse, that you look for the Lord. And recognizing, and recognizing that you've been transferred into the kingdom of his beloved son. 
remember that one of them, the remember that the, the ministerial gifts don't produce an inheritance. Who are the ones who are placed in the heavenly realms with Christ? The scripture doesn't say it's the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, although obviously they're going to be included if they're children of God, obviously. Because not everyone who is an apostle is a child of God, nor a prophet, nor an evangelist, nor the rest of them. There are some who I said, uh, an academy or institute made them apostles or pastors or etc. They are a product of, of an academy or a title. No, but this class of people who are in the heavenly realms, it is because they have been begotten by the Holy Spirit. And the ones who are begotten, those are the ones who are children of God. And that's why it's only the Son of God, the children of God, who inherit. So all the inheritance of Christ that is in Him and is with Him, and to sit with Him, if we are only waiting for a gift or a talent or a capacity, it's also good, but if you're a child of God, you're going to edify the body of Christ. But that's why you're going to have all these rights. The one who has rights is the son. It's not the one who has a gift or the son or daughter. Oh, well, some people get so happy about what they do. And many, their, their main thing is to only think and to do with excellence with everything. Their emphasis is to serve or their mentality is all about just serving in the temple. Oh, today I get to lead the service. Glorious. Or brother or sister, you're serving the Lord. Amen. Because today I'm going to lead the service. We lead. We, we limit our service of the Lord because of a privilege in the temple or a gift, but not because of what we are, kings and priests. For this reason, the Lord has spoken to us today about the importance and the necessity that we have to put ourselves in the right place in the Lord and allow or to let go of all of this profile of the darkness that belongs to the dominion of darkness. Because the dominion of darkness has its own per profile. That's why it's called the darkness. And that's why the scripture says that the one who doesn't have communion with his brother in one of the books of John, in the first John, it says the one who doesn't have communion with his brother lives in darkness. So the one who argues with his brother, don't tell me you're in the kingdom of God. You're in the darkness. Someone who speaks wrong about his brother, don't tell me that they're in the kingdom. That means they're in the darkness dominated by the power of the darkness. There's no light because the ones who live in the light, they have fellowship with each other. Look at the difference. So there's a profile in the kingdom of light or in the dominion of darkness. There's a profile. What profile are you expressing? How it was said today in the evening, when we read in Colossians chapter 3, when Christ our life manifests, he wasn't manifesting even though they were born again. Their profile was darkness. And that's why he speaks to them that they understand that they were transferred from the power of darkness to the kingdom of his beloved son because their profile was darkness. That's why he says, make, put to death the earthly things. They were not putting it to death. They were living with that profile of darkness. How many times we are speaking that way and we have not noticed that what we are revealing and what we're showing is a profile of the darkness, even though we were placed in the kingdom of light. But now that we have understood it, that we are children of God more than anything else, 
that there is a superiority in all of the sense of what that Christ expressed in every moment. He always, he always revealed the Father. In other words, he always, when he was in relationship with the Father, he was showing himself in the condition of a son. And when he spoke to the people, he spoke about the Father. So he preached in the condition of a son. And every time he casted out demons, he did it in the condition of being a son. We say, oh no, here comes the anointed of the Lord, the, the apostle chosen by the Lord to cast you out. The demon said to him, we know you have come from God. How beautiful. They recognized that he was the son of God. We know that you have come from God and you have come to destroy us. He came to destroy us as the son of God. Not as one of the ministerial gifts. Look, even with the enemies and with the dominion of darkness, he faced it as a son of God. It's because the authority of the son is the authority that is superior. It's the same authority that was given to Jesus Christ. And that's what he says. The, I give you power. I give you the power. What was given to me, I give to you. But why do we have that right? And why can he give it to us? Ah, it's because he gave it to me as an apostle or he gave me as a prophet. No, he gave it to you because you're a son or a child of God. So there is a superiority. I don't know what other word I could use. I don't have it right now. But that's the word that comes to me. The superiority of what... A, a, a superiority against any other position or function. What's superior is to be a child of God. And the Lord is taking us to understand that transfer. That we are children. That we, under, we rejoice that we are children of God. We are children and the greatest glory, the greatest joy that we could have is that even the people or even the church, like, oh, no, no I'm not saying that they, they lack respect and they don't recognize our ministry. That's a administrative function. But they shouldn't look at us more as pastors than as children of God. But they as well are also children of God. And we shouldn't lower them. That's the trap of the, the devil that has taken advantage of the church to make them believe that when we are call ourselves children of God, we're lowering ourselves in level. But with Christ, it was the most beautiful thing to present himself as the son of God to the father and to speak to him, father, but not just to the father, but to everyone, to, the, the, to hell and to the demons and to everyone, to the people as a son not as a prophet or apostle or any other ministry but he died on the cross as a son there he said father my father why have you forsaken me there he was in the quality in the condition of the son look how beautiful the victory that you are going to have is not because you're an apostle or because you're a prophet or any other gift you're going to have it because you're a child of god and that's why the lord has permitted us to do the Lord's Supper. And it's going to permit us to do this supper so that we can put ourselves in the right place and under the right understanding of what we are and let go of those paradigms and all those things that have disfocused us. That even though they're from God, the devil has taken advantage of it to get us deviated. Because the ministries are of God, but they have unfocused us and it says when he speaks to the church of Corinthian I fear like how the, the devil tricked Eve your senses have been deviated what does it mean to be deviated it means to be taken off of the path and to put them on another path oh but the, apost the apostle is of the, of the Lord Yes, being a prophet, being an apostle is of the Lord. But the objective, I'm talking about the priority. 
The superiority is Christ and it's the church as children of God. I put this example to make myself understood. Elijah says to Elisha, I want the double anointing. Don't don't leave. I want you that you give me the a double anointing. There was a condition. If you see me when I leave, you will have it. But in that it says there were cars of fire, chariots of fire, and they came to pick up Elijah. If we would have saw the when we see fireworks or anything, we're like, ah. like we say in Guatemala, we where our jaw dropped. We get where say, oh wow, look at that, look at this, look at that one, it one's big. But to see that one of a kind thing, it was like to that Elijah would get distracted, even though it was of God. But Elijah remained his focus and seeing Elijah. Even though it was something of the Lord, he didn't permit it to distract him because the order was, if you see me. How many things that are of God, the enemy has taken us to be distracted with those things. And not because they're not of God, but because it's not the superior and the most excellent. And that is what's happened with the church. They love more the privileges than the Lord himself and their place in him as children of God. When I, to me, personally, and my desire that in all of Christian Mission the Calvary, our joy, our rejoicement is that we are children of our Heavenly Father. And that if, because it's pleased him, if it pleases him to give us a ministry of gift, glory to God, because we're going to end up by his body. When we arrive and when we are presented to him, when he arrives, he's not going to ask us, how many sick people did you lift up from their sick beds? And we show them, although we're going to heal par paralyzed people and we have to start healing them. He's not going to ask us, how many demons did you cast out? But he's going to see our clothing as children of God. He's going to see what we are. A church that is glorious, and only the glorious church can be a child of God. Without blemish, without contamination, without wrinkle. Look, look, look at how the, the enemy has distorted us with things that are of God. But today, in this opportunity, the Lord permits us to have this Lord's Supper. And that we are remembering the death and the sacrifice of Christ, all of his work. And that's where precisely he made us children of God. That's where the precise place where he conquered and he demonstrated the glory of the Father and made us have the right to become children of God. Look, it's such a glorious moment, so adequate, so that you and I, as a church, we can take our place as children of God, not being beaten, but we are the ones who are victorious. Not being in a subculture, but in the culture of the kingdom of God. Not being dominated, but conquering. Being victorious, more than conquerors, as it was said earlier. Children of God. The creation is heming for you and for me. The creation is desiring. The creation is desperate for the glorious manifestation of the children of God. In other words... They're waiting for you and for me, but in function and in the quality of children of God. And today, this participation of the Lord's Supper is for that. To place Christian Mission the Calvary where, well, he is in the right place. 
but the ones who haven't been in their place have been us. But he's taking us and placing us in the right place today. In the kingdom of his beloved son. Blessed be his name. So that we don't just preach of the king, but that we show and we demonstrate his rule in our lives and to the nations as well. Glorify Christ for a moment as children. As children, we have been created created for the praise of his glory. Well, it speaks about the church. And the church, we don't assume we are. We are the children of God. So we are for the glory of his name. So let's exalt the Lord as children of God. Praise his name. Revelando el origen, tú eres la expresión original. Genética única, tú eres la expresión igual. Revelando el origen, tú eres la expresión original. Engendrado por el Padre, en todo eres igual, reprodujiste tu imagen y demuestras con firmeza que eres auténtico, eres único, quien como tú, un ingenito hijo de Dios. Sobre todo eres Señor, nunca has dejado de ser único. ¿Quién es como tú? ¿Quién como tú? Permanente Hijo de Dios, tan veraz. Tu palabra no pasará, nunca has dejado de ser único. Bendito. Nunca has dejado de ser único. Genética única, tú eres la expresión igual. Revelando el origen, tú eres la expresión original. Genética única, tú eres la expresión igual revelando el origen tú eres la expresión original engendrado engendrado por el Padre en todo eres igual, reprodujiste tu imagen y demuestras con firmeza que eres auténtico, eres único, quien como tú, un ingenito hijo de Dios, eres fiel. 
sobre todo eres Señor Nunca has dejado de ser único ¿Quién como tú? Permanente Hijo de Dios Tan verás Tu palabra No pasará Nunca has Dejado De ser Único Nunca has dejado Nunca has Dejado De ser Único Hijo de Dios Nunca has dejado de ser La expresión fiel Del Padre Tú eres por siempre el que revela perfectamente su naturaleza Tu iglesia tiene todo de ti Toda tu genética, tu naturaleza perfecta y expresan perfectamente lo que tú eres para siempre. Para siempre. Déjeme darle esta revelación también, la cual está en Juan capítulo 4. Let me tell you this revelation as well. In John 4:21, in John 4:21, and on, Jesus said, "Woman, believe me, the hour comes when not on the mountain of Jerusalem you will worship the Father." But who does he say? The Father. Who are the ones who worship the Father? If it's at the Father, it's the children. Let's continue. Now you're going to understand me better. You're going to understand the Holy Spirit better. So then it says in verse 22, you worship what you don't know. So he's saying you didn't worship, but it's something they didn't know. But we worship what we know because the salvation comes from the Jews. But look at what the Lord says to the to this woman. And he didn't exclude her for being a woman, but he gave her a revelation that not even the apostles received. What does it say? The verse says, you worship what you don't know, but the salvation comes from the Jews. But look what it says in the next verse. But the hour has come. Or the, the hour is coming, but then it says uh, the affirmation. The hour is now. It's not tomorrow. It's not the past, but it's now. When the true, true, the true worshipers, it says the true ones. There are worshipers who are true. If it says there are true ones, the true worshipers will worship the Father. They will worship the Father. Who is it speaking about again? It's talking about children who are true, who are worshiping the Father in spirit and truth because also the Father, look at how many times he says it. It talks about the Father. Those type of worshipers, he looks so that they can worship him. The God is spirit and those who worship him who spirit and truth, it's necessary that they worship him. What is he saying here? Let me say this revelation. Some of them are going to be scared. And glory to God if they do. Not every person who praises 
worships him. Oh, it's because I came to praise God. I came to praise God. And that doesn't mean I'm worshiping him. They're children. Not the ones who have a function. Not the ones who went to academy or institute or an institution to have a title to be a worshiper. No, that was given to them. It's those who are children of God. They worship the Father. That's why there's many singers and many people who are in the worship or in the praise. That's what we've been calling them. But they're praising, but they're not worshiping him. Because you know why it, what is required to worship according to this, not according to the apostle, not according to Christian mission the Calvary, but it is according to Christian mission the Calvary because it is because we believe in the word. It is those who worship in spirit and in truth. To worship God, it requires the spirit. And it requires the truth. It's talking about the spirit and the truth. The truth is Christ expressed. It's his word lived in our lives. It's not a word that's written in a book, but it's written in us. It's reality in us. So not any person who sings and worships and be careful. Don't be confused that the famous musicians of the of the worship teams that don't they, they don't get confused or the pastor considers that because they're singing the worshiping God first they need to be children of God not that they are in the worship team and praise because they were delegated that position or how we was said in the morning they have a special gift for music. They are experts for music. If they're not children of God, even though they praise, it doesn't worship God. Because it's to the Father. And if it speaks about the Father, it means it's the Son or children of God worshiping the Father. So this takes us to have a true worship, but in the quality of of children of God to the Father. So let's again worship and exalt God, but not just because how the song said before, I came to praise God. Uh, in, an inconverted person could sing that song. We're not just going to do it because the song says it. It's not because of that we're, we're worshiping God. Because only the children that have the Spirit and have the truth, it says, they are the ones who worship the Father. Let's glorify the name of the Father together. Lift up your voice. Lift up your hands. Exalt together the one who lives, but as children of God, worshiping the Father. Not because you know the music and glory of God. If you do, and I'm very happy, and I congratulate you, but not because... It's of a talent, but it's because of your position in Christ Jesus as children of God, worshiping and glorifying Him. So let's exalt His name with all of our heart. Única, única, tú eres la expresión igual. Revelando el origen, tú eres la expresión original. Exalted be your name, Father. You're the one and only Son Etica, of God. En ética única, tú eres la expresión igual. Oh, we worship you. We glorify you for who you are. Revelando el origen, tú eres la expresión original. The original expression. Engendrado, engendrado 
por el Padre En todo eres igual Reprodujiste tu imagen Y demuestras con firmeza Que eres auténtico Eres único Quien como tú Unigénito Hijo de Dios Eres fiel Sobre todo Eres Señor Nunca has dejado De ser único change in expression, you never change in authority, you never change, you always present yourself with the Lord, you live in our son of the Lord, you live in our son of the Lord, the ability to glorify you, the ability to reveal you, because you live in us and we live in you, and that perfect oneness, and that perfect oneness under your authority. Your glory, Lord. Oh, thank you for making us your children. 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 Making us your all of the moments that you gave us at the moment we resurrected with you. The moment we were born again, you gave us your spirit. You gave us your spirit. You gave us the truth. Because you are the truth. And you reproduced you in the Son. And the Son has reproduced you in us. Magnifico. Glorious King. How beautiful it would be that we can unite groups of two, three, or five, or more, and together we can exalt the Lord and worship His name and raise our hands because it's the time of glory and rejoicement and fill ourselves with joy. That's why well, wherever you are, that you feel and you experience the glory of God. That as children of God, we all express as one Christian mission to Calvary, expressing the glory of Christ. The Spirit of God glorifying Christ through us. Here, from here, I'm asking that everyone unites with us, that we raise our voice, that we exalt Him, that we glorify God. It's a time of worship, to worship Him. Hallelujah! To glorify Him. Therefore, how beautiful it is. Many have already to get in a group, and here, it's going to happen here as well, but we're going to give to Him the glory that is owed to his name. Because it says in the word, it will come to the time, but the time has come. The time has come. And the Lord tells me that I tell you, the time is now, it has come. The time has arrived that we worship and we glorify the one who lives forever. Let's exalt the name of the Lord. Let's bless his name. Aleluya. Aleluya. Exaltado sea su nombre. Exaltado. Bendito el que reina y el que gobierna. En espíritu y en verdad, tú mereces adoración y ser exaltado. ¿Por quién eres tú? ¿Por quién eres tú? Santo eres santo. You are holy in everything. Perfecto y sublime eres tú. Gobierna sobre todo. Todo se sustenta en ti. Santo, santo. 
perfecto perfecto y sublime eres tú gobierna sobre todo todo se sustenta en ti toda lengua toda lengua confesará que eres el Eres el Toda lengua confesará Que eres el Rey Inegable es la obra de tus manos La tierra está llena de ti Toda la creación testifica que solo tú eres el rey. Presides, presides las naciones con justicia. Absoluta tu victoria es. Despliegas tu poder. Pues solo tú eres el rey, tú eres el rey, tú eres el rey, tú eres el rey. Santo eres en Perfecto y sublime eres tú. Gobierna sobre todo. Todo se sustenta en ti. Santo, Santo eres en todo. Perfecto y sublime. Eres tú, gobierna sobre todo. Todo se sustenta en toda lengua, toda lengua confesará que eres el rey. Solo tú eres el rey, presides, presides las naciones con justicia, absoluta tu victoria es, despliegas tu poder inagotable, pues solo tú Sometimes. 
recognition that he is God and therefore he is worthy to be worshipped and praised. We're going to take the bread and the cup and we're going to prepare ourselves to enter in the execution of the Lord's Supper. We're going to give a couple of minutes so that you can get close to where the bread and the cup is. But remember that this Lord's Supper is to recognize that we have been transferred to the kingdom of his beloved son. 
and therefore I am a child of God. And I am a king and a priest of the glory of his Father. Under that understanding, we enter a new dimension. It's very different, a different phase. It's different from phase and dimension. A dimension is very more amplified. It touches every part of the ambient. But a stage has to do with levels, phases. Same thing, it has to do with steps. But the Lord is not introducing us to another level or another phase, but he's taking us to another dimension. As children of him, doing things how he said it must be done. It's for that reason that it's so important, this moment. Because it's a moment of recognition of that transfer. It's not just because we know it, but because now it's being it's revelation in our life. And how Jesus Christ said, or how John said about Christ, the word became flesh. So this word becomes flesh. It becomes reality. You are a child of God. I am a child of God. All Christian mission the Calvary who have been born again, we are children of God. Blessed be his name. And as children, yes, truly, we can truly worship the Father. Worship him is not just to sing to him what he is and what he does. Worship him is to express what he is. Not with words, but with testimony. That's why we're witnesses. Look how great. And that's the dimension that today he places us. The scripture says that his body, that his flesh, that's why we're part. Yesterday I spoke about how in the Old Testament there are symbols and figures. It was required because it was a faith of hope. But now it's a faith of actions. Now we don't need symbols or figures. Now it's reality. So let's participate of the blood and the body of Christ. That's how the scripture says. And I believe the scripture. And therefore, lift up your hands and together we say Lord we are grateful we give you thanks for the revelation that you have not been pleased to reveal in and through us therefore we recognize that we are your children your children true children begotten by the Holy Spirit, transferred from the power of the darkness to the kingdom of your beloved Son. And that we apply in our lives today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Participate. Exalt God. Because that transfer is not just a knowledge, it's life. It's life. It's reality. Praise to be to his name. And we're going to sign it. We're going to say it like Paul said, God revealed his son in me. And that's what God is doing today. Hallelujah. Praise be to his name. 
Let's raise together. Lord, it's because of your blood that we have access to the most holy place. And we have it as children of God because we're kings and priests. And that's why in your name, we live and we place ourselves and we position ourselves in the place that you've given us. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, our expression from this point on is now visible, notorious, that the nations will know that you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let's participate in his name. Hallelujah. 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 Uf, glorioso. Uf, glorious. Glorioso. Glorious, glorious. Qué hermoso es tenerte How como padre. How beautiful it is to have you as our father. Qué hermoso es saber que somos tus hijos. And how beautiful it is to know that we are your children. Aleluya. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to his name. Oof. Exalt the Lord there. Bless him. Exalt him. Rejoice. The joy of the Lord is over Christian Mission the Calvary. Alabado sea su nombre. Praise be to his name. Alabado sea su nombre. Praise be to his name. Alabado sea su nombre. Exaltado Praise be to his él. name. Exalted be his name. Aleluya. 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 Santo es nuestro Dios. Holy is our God. Qué grandioso, qué grandioso, qué grandioso. How great, how great, how great. Qué grandioso, aleluya. How great, aleluya. Al único rey y verdadero, aleluya. To the only true king. To him we give glory and honor. Y no solo al que reina, sino al que reina en nosotros y en las naciones. And in the nations. Porque es notorio y será notorio. Because it is notorious and it will be notorious. Alabado sea su nombre. That the kingdom has come into our lives. Praise to his name. Praise his name. sea él. Magnified is your name. Volvamos a cantar ese coro que estábamos cantando anteriormente y juntos allá. Let's sing together the song. Together what we were singing before. That is not just a song. Sino sea la expresión de nuestro corazón hacia el Señor. But it can be the expression of our heart to the Lord. Solo tú eres el rey. 
recibes las naciones con justicia absoluta tu victoria es desplegas tu poder inagotable pues solo tú eres el rey tú eres el rey tú eres el rey tú eres el rey desde siempre y para siempre tú eres el rey tú eres el rey tú eres el rey desde siempre y para siempre tú eres el rey que vamos a terminar to say that we're going to finish that would say as if the spirit of god would stop doing what he's doing in all places but that's impossible it's not going to happen because the spirit of god continues continues and will continue working that's why today i just want to give thanks to the lord for this day and this time not giving a closure to this reunion obviously here in the transmission it will end but i know that you and the spirit of god will guide you to continue in worship and exaltation in communion some will eat dinner together will exalt because that also is to worship god that's part of the worship someone can say i'm not i'm not singing But Abraham was not singing when he sacrificed his son. But he said, we're going to go on the mountain. We're going to worship the Lord. 
So continue worshiping God in that fellowship, in that communion. And tomorrow, let's be ready to start and prepare as children to receive more and more of what the Lord has for us. Blessings. And let's enjoy that glorious Father, our Father, and let's exalt His name. And Jesus Christ, who He has sent. And He has sent the Holy Spirit to guide us and take us to glorify Jesus Christ. May God bless you. And let's continue enjoying the glory of the Lord.